Welcome back to House TV Live. I'm Rick Spence, and this time we're going a mile high to beautiful Denver, Colorado. With me today is Robin Bryant with Factor Design Build. Well, Robin, what a beautiful home. And it starts with the entryway. So give me a feel for the overall vibe you were going for with this home and how you experience it completely different than you might expect from the outside. Yeah, absolutely. So we wanted to go for a, a contemporary organic modern, so kind of a soft modernism on the interior of this house. So the front door is really the first impression that you get when you arrive at the front of a house. So it's the thing that draws you in. So having a strong focal point at your front door can really make the experience for your guests really special. What's also really beautiful is the way that the light fixture engages with this stairwell. And when you walk in the front door, it just draws your eye up to look at this beautiful railing and staircase. It almost has a nautical vibe to it. Yeah, definitely. It's part of the the curvature of the interior stairwell that was already there. The previous railing was more, much more traditional. So it had kind of uh, wood balusters that were more ornate. So we wanted to kind of transition those Georgian details into a more contemporary style. So that handrail is all new and it was it was beautiful watching the woodworkers kind of build that curved stair rail and sand and bend and sand and bend to get it to fit perfectly. That's just beautiful. And I like the little little touch of art at the top. Like there's a little treat when you go up, right? There's a little piece of artwork up there too. Very nice. Exactly. I think it's locating art um, in a unique way can really create an element of discovery as you walk through the house, which I think um, can can make a house special. All right. So you come in, you've got the, the beautiful wood, and then you did something new with the tie-in that creates almost like this path to the, the to the powder room. Tell me about why you did that and what that does for the space. Yeah, absolutely. So we cut the hardwood floor around the hexagonal tile. So we really wove those two materials together to have that organic feel. But we also wanted to extend that into the powder room so that the guests kind of had a natural approach to where that was. We did that same detail up the wall, and then we cut in wallpaper um, along the hexagonal tile. You also repeat sort of that vibe of the lighting fixture in the entry in here, too. Yeah, that lighting fixture is one of my favorite things in the entire house. It's like little origami birds sitting on a perch. And I love how we kind of pulled it down a little bit lower so it kind of intersects with the mirror. I think it just makes the room feel completely tied together. And it adds that little bit of whimsy and fun to um, interior design. So it's, it's not a large space. So to maximize it, did you go more horizontal with the sink and the wall mount faucets? Yeah, absolutely. I think that that was just an element to keep some lightness in the space. A floating sink is a detail that can make a smaller space feel larger. Wall mounting the faucets just gives you that extra space on the countertop if you want to lay um, some hand towels or put some soap. It just gives that more customized detail when you do a wall mount fixture. Beautiful. All right, so let's go into where a lot of the action in the home takes place, the kitchen. This is a, a beautiful kitchen. And the first thing that jumps out is just that beautiful piece of stone. Yes. So that stone was actually the centerpiece of the entire kitchen design. It's a blue marine quartzite. Everything surrounding it is kind of a softened support of really emphasizing that blue kind of aqua color in the quartzite. The rest of the countertop, is that a manufactured stone around the perimeter of the kitchen? Yeah. So that is a Caesar stone, which is a beautiful concrete look quartz countertop, very light and soft and on the warm tone. So it really blends in with the white oak cabinetry. When you're choosing hardware in terms of the shape and the feel and the scale and the size and the finish, it's a lot to consider. Like, how do you get to that, that final, that final piece? And you know, it's going to work. Do, do the client's do you bring them examples or how does it work with you? I always order hardware samples. What's the most important to me is that it's a solid brass or like a solid metal handle. You know, it has like a weight to it. So it feels like a quality piece. It doesn't really matter what the finish is on the outside, just as long as you have that solid brass base. I also think it's really interesting. I love the little finger pulls that we used on the lift up cabinets. I think that that adds a really nice touch because it's so small and delicate and then you know, just kind of re-emphasizes the rest of the kitchen. 
And in terms of your lighting in the space, lots of overhead lights and then sort of the 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 spider sort of <laughs> tell me about that. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. We needed a lot of can lighting for just the functional purposes and task lighting in the kitchen. But I really love the kind of mid-century feel of the light fixture over the kitchen island and just the simplicity of it, that it's just kind of three shrouded lamps and it's giving you all your task lighting on the island. I think it reinforces that lightness and contemporary feel that we were going for that in the house. What about your decision for mostly opaque glass next to the refrigerator? If the glass cabinets had been just solid white oak, I think it might have felt a little bit blocky in that space. So the glass cabinets add a little bit more dimension. And I love how they sit on top of the countertop and we ran the countertop underneath it. I just that's one of my favorite details because it gives you a little bit of extra storage in the cabinet. But then it also starts to look more like a furniture piece than just like a wall of built in cabinetry. I think that's a really nice approach. And the little corner is pretty cool, too, because you've got little experience with the open shelving. We were taking something traditional and turning it into more modern contemporary. So I think that 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 corner floating shelf really lends itself to reinforcing that contemporary design. And I also love the the under cabinet lighting, which is routed into the underside of the shelf. It just makes them feel like they're glowing and floating. And it also just makes that glass ribbed backsplash pop. Yeah. Tell me about the backsplash. Yeah. So the backsplash is a Sonoma glass tile and it's got a uh, vertical ribs in it. It's very delicate looking when you have the sample, but when you uh, apply it on the entire wall, it almost looks like a wallpaper, but it has the durability of a glass backsplash. Oh, one other thing I noticed too, in terms of your outlets, you didn't go with the traditional boxy outlet. There's discrete circular outlets. What's the reason for that? The backsplash right against the countertop is actually a countertop return. So it's that concrete Caesar stone on the back of the wall. And we just didn't want to put a typical standard outlet on there. We kind of wanted to let the concrete look be the focal point and not be distracted by a square outlet. So we use these really beautiful circular receptacles that have a cover plate on them. So when you're not using them, you don't even see the holes in the outlet. It almost just disappears and becomes part of the stone. Beautiful, beautiful space. I'm always interested to know the role that house played in the in the design. And I understand that this client came through house for this project. Yeah, absolutely. So she uh, found us through house. And so when we were working on the project, we kind of, we used that as a communication tool. I love houses idea books. That's one of the best tools for me to communicate with my clients. The ability to share inspiration pictures with them and also for the clients to share inspiration pictures with us and to be able to leave like a little blurb about what you like about the picture that you sent is a great tool to help um, to narrow down what the focus of the project is going to be. Hey, so let's check out. Let's go into the primary bedroom and give me a feel for this and what you wanted to achieve with this space. And it has sort of a little secret in it as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, so their original design was a bedroom with a separate sitting area and you would access the bathroom off of the sitting area. One of the goals was to take the sitting room and use it for the client's office, but also to make it feel so it doesn't feel like your office is in your bedroom. So what we did is we actually partitioned those two spaces instead of having them be one big, large space, which gave us a great opportunity for a new head wall for the bed. And then on either side of the bed wall, we created these hidden passage doors. You can close them and it looks like you're just in a solid room. But when you open these doors, they flip back 180 degrees and connect into the client's office. And it's not just a small office. That's a big space. Yeah, it is. And um, what I like the most about it is the, the wallpaper accent detail. It's one of those details when you walk through the house where kind of around every corner is a discovery that keeps things really interesting. It's her own private sanctuary. Yeah, really nice. All right, speaking of sanctuary, tell me about this beautiful bed. How cozy is that? Yeah, so um, that is a really cool detail. So that is a custom piece of furniture that we had made specifically for this project. And then we mounted the wall sconces 
exactly where those nightstands were supposed to be. So that was a little bit of coordination between having the, the cuts and built piece of furniture and coordinating with the getting the lighting in the correct place really a benefit for us to have a higher ceiling in a bedroom because it gives us the opportunity to do something more special with the light fixture, especially like a large statement fixture. Let's go into this beautiful bathroom. And it looks like you repeated some of the same materials here. Yeah. So I love the vanity countertops. So we custom built the sinks out of the countertop material to get that fully integrated concrete sink look. That's one of the really special details in there. You don't have any caulking. You don't have any lips on the edge of your sink that you have to like wipe things over. Um, it just really gives that integrated seamless look and also super easy to care for. How did you do the compromise on the size of the tub? It definitely depends on who's the one using the tub as is what size you should get. Sometimes your space limits you. So I would say with a tub, you always want at least a 60 inch long tub to be comfortable. But if you have this space and you're a little bit of a taller person, I would say if you're anywhere over five foot six to six feet tall, you probably want to go with a little bit longer tub that's five, you know, almost like the same height as you. Well, this looks like an amazing collaboration because it came out so beautiful. So congrats on all that. And thank you so much for taking the time to walk us through these spaces. Oh, thank you, Rick. It was a pleasure. Okay, see you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.